All right. So, th- by the way, this is my first time doing one of these podcasts over Zoom. So normally I have someone uh, in the office with me in our little studio at the office. But uh, my man Jimmy P right here is down in the worst place in the world for weather, South Florida. Come on now. So I, I believe you're in Delray, but you- you'll get to that part. But Delray is beautiful. Atlantic Avenue, all the little restaurants out there close to the beach. Yeah, uh, I just I absolutely love it. And I can't wait to dig in with you about life and business because uh, we go back probably seven or eight years now. Yeah, at believe. least. And before we get started, is there anything that you would like to just share with the audience? Anybody that's listening? Well, first of all, I mean, thanks for having me, Kim. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure I love being a guinea pig. This is your first <laughs> time on Zoom, so that, that means if you screw up, I screw up. So you get bring this together. <laughs> I, I always think of when I'm sitting on a flight. I've seen somebody I know in the, in as we're getting on the plane, and then as they go to their seat and I go to my seat, they always say, "Have a good flight," and I'm like, "I hope so," because <laughs> your flight is my flight. So I feel the same thing here. The Zoom thing, you know, your yeah. first time, my first time. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, you and I have always stayed in touch. Yeah. Uh, there are people, and I don't know if you realize this as well, but I have all my old friends yeah. where I grew up down in, in Miami Beach. I have all, all my friends of all the different places I've lived. I lived in Atlanta. I have friends from there. But I'm telling you now, some of the friends that I've met within the industry or while in my job in the industry are some of my closer friends that I just always keep in touch with. So uh, you're one of those guys, even if we don't talk for a while, you know, we I see a like on Facebook or a quick hit on this or that, and we call each other. So I'm I'm thrilled that you have me on your uh, inaugural Zoom call. Thanks for having me. Well, look, man, um, so you you have been, man, you, you, you're an influential guy to me, by the way, for anybody that is interested in in sales, anybody interested in leadership. Anybody interested in becoming an effective, meaningful speaker, whether they're talking to three people in a room or if they're talking to a thousand people in a room. And I had the the privilege of attending a workshop that you put on for a company I was working for in Washington, D.C. And I promise you, I am the biggest thief in the world because I have... (laughs) I have captured your information. I've stolen it. No, 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 no. You've liberated. <laughs> that sounds so much because I love to say stolen too. And then at some point in my career, I changed that to liberated. There you go, man. Right? I have liberated your information and I've shared it with so right. many people. And I, I watched them develop and I'm like, Jimmy P, Jimmy P. So before we get into impact speakers, though, you're you're an, you're you're just a fun guy, man. So I know that you, uh, you've you been married to your wife, Toby, for a very long time. I just want you, before we get into, into Impact Speakers, I want you to tell me a little bit about just your family and, and somehow get to your dad, because your dad has an amazing yeah. story down in Miami Beach that I want you to share with everybody. Well, actually, I could start with both parents, because in, in, in my day, and I swear I would never say that when I was young, you'd listen to all the old people going, you know, back when I was a kid, well, uh, you know, I, I grew up in, a, in an area and in, in an era where I didn't have my first male teacher until I was in sixth grade. Wow. Harry Jones was my first male teacher. So uh, in those days, you know, if we would go around the room and say, well, what does your dad do for a living? Nobody ever said, what does your mom do for a living? Because moms didn't work. Moms were housewives. Moms were homemakers. You remember that? Yeah. So so for me, I was very blessed. I had a dad who was a police chief. Uh, and, and you said, mention my dad. His, his name was Rocky. And he uh, he actually ran all the political conventions from uh, from the 68 Republicans in Miami Beach, which followed the Democrats in Chicago with all the turmoil. And he ran both conventions in the summer of 72, which is legendary. Uh, subsequent to that, they uh, both the Republicans and Democrats hired him to run security for other venues, too, as they came up. So I'm very, very proud of him. And in 1977, he was the president of the IACP, which is the International Association of Chiefs of Police. So that meant he was the top cop in the world. Yeah. So he spoke all over the country. I had a mother who did work. My mom was an actress. 
So she did a lot of television commercials. She did some local stage stuff, uh, summer stock when she was younger. She had bit parts in movies where she did have speaking roles. Uh, I mean, she did a Man from Glad commercial that put my brother through college. So, I mean, so she also was a spokesperson. She was very comfortable on a stage. So I jokingly say when I was born, they said, oh, congratulations, you have a son and a microphone. <laughs> if you give me a mic, I'm going to talk or sing. <laughs> so, uh, so the, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about my upbringing. As far as now, uh, my wife, Toby, and I have been married 42 years. Uh, we have two kids. One lives only five minutes away. And more importantly than him living five minutes away, because I could care less, but he's got my grandkids. So, uh, you know, the greatest line in the world is, why do grandparents and grandkids get along so well? It's because we have common enemies. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't think my son thinks that's as funny as other people do. But uh, so seriously, they live five minutes away, which is fantastic. Yeah. We do have a rule that nobody just drops in. But with given uh, notice, enough ample notice, then it's it's always great to see the grandkids. Uh, my daughter, Erica, lives in Chicago. I'll actually be doing a two day workshop next week in Chicago. So I'll go early with Toby a couple of days and uh, she and Erica can play while I'm while I'm working on uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday teaching my two day seminar. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, life is good. Live in South Florida and was born in Miami Beach. Had a brief, well, not brief, 18 years in Atlanta because it made travel much easier. Of course. You know, when, you're in, when you're in South Florida, and I live near PBI, which is Palm Beach International, uh, I fly Delta, so you have to change planes. I'm on four planes every week, uh -huh. and I don't even love to fly. So uh, the joke is when I die on my way to heaven, I'm going to have to go through Atlanta. <laughs> um, so we actually lived there for 18 years, have a lot of good friends and memories from there. But we're back. We're back now in South Florida, where where I grew up, and and we're loving life. So you mentioned something about the microphone, um, and so you. I don't know. I think most people that know you know that you're a singer, and that you're. Well, I know I sing. I don't know if I'm a singer, but they know I sing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you're you're a you're a singer to me, man. And so share with me how you got started with the band, and the name of the band, by the way, is super okay. cool too. So just yeah. tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> Well, you know, actually, you know, I always sang. Uh, I was in my high school choir. I always sang. I really wasn't in bands until I moved to Atlanta hmm. uh, and got involved in a band where these guys were all rocking since they were in high school. And I was already in my 30s or actually 40s before I ever even got in a band, but just absolutely loved it. So when I moved back to South Florida, I moved into a neighborhood where there was an existing band and because I'm in Florida, and here the jokes will all come, uh, you know, there's somewhat of an elderly population here. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> Seinfeld says the state flag should be just a steering wheel and hands. <laughs> Traffic signals, blinkers on cars, those are all just suggestions here in South Florida. Yeah. So <laughs> I got involved in a band in a 55 and older community, and it is a great, a great name. It's the Grateful We're Not Dead. So... <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's just it's just fun. It's a great hobby. We play throughout a lot of the other neighborhoods and there's some good camaraderie between the guys and it gives me an opportunity to get up with a mic and sing. So, yeah, right. yeah I love it. So you I, I know you you uh, sang the national anthem at some stadiums. Twice. Your band, what kind of music do you guys typically sing? <clears throat> so because of the audience mm -hmm. and because of our era, uh, I love doing all the 60s and 70s stuff. Uh, me particularly, you hear this raspy voice, so I love the old school soul. Yes. Uh, Marvin Gaye, Otis Redding, Wilson Pickett, James Brown, Stevie Wonder, Al, uh, you know, Sam and Dave, Temptations, Four Tops. I could just keep going. So that's all. That's all the stuff I love to do. Yeah, man. Um, so let's let's talk about impact speakers. Yeah. Because I, I'm 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 being very serious. When I, I've been a a public speaker for a long time, a long time, and I mean forty years. And the, the, but for me, I always have an appetite for learning. I'm always open to hearing information and seeing how either I can say, yeah, I'm doing it right. Or I'm like, man, I thank you. Cause I can use that. I'm going to incorporate that in what I'm doing and just makes me a better person as, you know, as a whole. And for me, what I got out of your workshop and you're going to talk about it was this, the skills that you taught were portable. In other mm -hmm. words, I could use them in my personal life. I could right. use them in my professional life. 
And just please share with us how you got started with Impact Speakers, because I know that you were uh, at the upper crust of some insurance companies and, and you had a very significant role in some insurance companies. But how did you decide to break away from that and start your own company, Impact Speakers? Well, yeah, actually, it got started. And by the way, I'm, I'm thrilled that you mentioned because people hear presentation skills and they all think of stand and deliver. Right. But presentation skills are 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 one on one. Presentation skills are emails, voicemails, speaking on the telephone, uh, small groups. You know, thousand people in an audience. Those are all presentation because I call it presentation communication um. and sales because there's a very strong bent towards the sale you know, getting people to do something that you need them to do. So that's a lot of what I do as well. But so years ago, um, you know, actually I was, I was in a, a neighborhood down in South, in South Florida, down near Fort Lauderdale, west of Fort Lauderdale. And uh, I got involved in a company that teaches presentation skills. And I, I, I loved the process. I loved what they taught. And so while I was there for a very short time, I had a, a gentleman called me from, from a very large company, AIG Sun America, and said, hey, all my people are going through your training there. Why am I buying the milk when I should just hire the cow? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I said, I'm not thrilled with the analogy, but, you know, because um, it was utterly ridiculous. I won't do that anymore, <laughs> sorry. But I was moved. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I went on board with him, and I was the national sales training director for almost 10 years before I then realized, hey, you know, why work for a large corporation? I can do this thing on my own. And, you know, for, it's interesting when people call me and they say, how do I get started? How, the, the, the first way you get started is to have the guts to just sever ties with a guaranteed paycheck and benefits and so on and say, hey, I can do this thing. That's, that's what you got to do first. Um, I had no overhead and I already had a computer. All I, only thing I had to pay for was some of the legal stuff and uh, a web designer to go, come up with also logos and things like that. And then I just hit the ground running. I, you know, people love to talk about the growing pains in their industry and so on. And I, I didn't have that. I was blessed that while I was at AIG Sun America, I got to know so many people at other companies. And so all I really did was start calling them and saying, hey, do you need a speaker at events? Do you need somebody to come in and do the training that you're familiar with and so on? And I, I mean, Kim, I really just hit the ground running. I, I, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that like son of a gun. <laughs> so, uh, and I never looked back. I've been doing it for gosh, over 20, 25 years now and loving every minute of it. So um, one thing that, um, that stands out to me is that there's something that you talk about um, and, and you can, I, I know you can share this part with everybody. It's something about the power of three. Hmm. When you're communicating with people, if you start talking about 10 things, right. they're going to get lost in the sauce. But talk about that a little bit, the power of three. Yeah. And if you, and if you talk about 10 things, the first thing they're going to do is <laughs> check out the watch. Because we've all been involved in those. Uh, you know, I don't care who we are. You have a program in front of you and you're like, oh, my God, they're only on this. <laughs> you know, and you know, they're going to keep going. So, yeah, listen, a lot of a lot of what I teach, I did learn, uh, give credit to, to the first company that I did work with at, at that short period of time in South Florida. But listen, most of what they taught was liberated as well. And there is something called the power of three. Uh, I think about the first stories you ever heard when you were a kid. Think of the first stories you told your kids. You know, three blind mice, three bears, three musketeers, three wise men. Yeah. You know, those are all power of three. When you when you uh, uh, listen to the radio or television and they give that phone number three times, they say the name of the brand three times. Why three? It works. Two makes it sound a little trivial. Four, again, is getting up into that territory where it's just too much. Yeah. But three does a few things. It makes it easier for us, the speaker, to remember what we're talking about. It makes it easier for the listener to follow along and know, oh, those are the three things I need to remember. Not only can they follow, but they can retain what they heard. And most importantly, as in a lot of sales positions, they can then turn around and repeat what they heard. And that's, that's the big key of it. Uh, I always give the example of the local news. There's three things, news, weather, sports. And so 
you know, they 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 tell you what they're going to tell you, then they tell you, then they tell you what they told you. Well, that's the philosophy of of what we're doing here. It's not it's nothing new. Like I said, even the company I worked with didn't invent it. But you know what? It works and it's simple and people get better. That's the best part of the job, watching people improve over just two short days of a seminar. Yeah, but that's so you, the way you deliver the information is incredibly powerful, man. And another cool thing is, and, and I want you to really talk about this part because I, I believe it's so important, is that you, you're very competent, you're very knowledgeable, you're a world traveler, but you're a humble dude, man. You're just an everyday guy that I could walk into a, a restaurant or a bar and sit next to and just have a meaningful conversation with so why do you feel it's important for people to just be genuine and, and with their approach to life in general? Yeah. Well, if I do see in a restaurant and I, you know, you'll pick up the tab, right? And, uh, yeah, want, yeah. <laughs> let's get that out of the way first. But yeah, so the, the thing is, we've all been at meetings, parties, social, any type of social uh, arena, and you see people and they're demonstrative. We see it in our industry. You know the you know the meet and greet the night before the big meeting, and people are so demonstrative, and they're talking about their kids, and they're talking about where they went on vacation, and their sports teams, and all the things they're passionate about. And then invariably, the next day, you see that same person get up to speak. Hi, I'm Jimmy, and I'm here. To what? <laughs> well, last <laughs> night, well, he was probably trashed the night before, but they, irrespective of that. What happened to that person? They turn into the presenter. They think that this is a way they have to present. I don't teach people to be automatons. If I have, well, I did. If I have a, a Kim Harrington in the room, along with Joe Blow, along with Mary Smith, along, each one of them has their own personal signatures, their own, their own personalities. So to try to teach somebody else to be me, or to teach everybody, hey, Kim is a great presenter. Try to be like him. Yeah, now, can you take, can you extrapolate certain traits, certain things that people do? Absolutely. Techniques, absolutely. But you have to be yourself. Because otherwise, there's a disconnect. I I'm sure, Kim, you've also, you've seen these people on stage, because sometimes the opposite is true as well. Yeah. And they're up there, and, and then you talk to them, and they're, they all I'm saying is make those two people the same person. Otherwise, how do you know who's the real person? You mentioned the word real. Yeah. That's a big deal. Authenticity, sincerity. Those are things. I mean, you could fake them for a while, but you can't fake them for years and years and years. People got to know what they're getting. And so I think that's why that's the process that we teach is to have everybody up there be themselves. The best compliment I can give somebody in one of my seminars when they come to sit down and they get critiqued is, hey, I finally found you up there. And and they know what that means because I'm harping on it for two days. Of and course. so I guess that's what you're referring to. If not, you know, please clarify. But no, I, no. I think that's that's what we're talking about here. That's you, exactly it. And so yeah. let's um let's put a bow on it with this. And whenever I have an opportunity to talk to someone like you that is you just travel a lot. You it, my one of my biggest things that I say is that your perspective on life cannot grow unless your environment expands. Mm -hmm. And so, and what I mean by that is if we're, we're stuck in our little bubble and we never get out of that bubble, our view of, of the world and life and people is just so skewed. So let's end with this. When it comes to traveling and experiencing different things around the world, uh, first of all, let us know where you say you got to go here. <laughs> and why is that important in your life to, to just be part of the world, the environment, not just be stuck in South Florida, let's say. Well, so the cool thing is it's not even just the world. It's like, you know, when when uh, when my wife and I talk about, hey, where do you want to go? Or she'll say, I'd love to go here and I'd love to go there. Um, stay in the United States, too. I mean, there's yeah. some there's some unbelievable. I mean, the, the view of driving around the lake in Lake Tahoe or, or certain areas, uh, you know, where, the, where the, the environment is so beautiful. Remember, people come to Florida. The funny thing, Kim, is when we travel in the United States and people say, where are you from? And we'll say South Florida. They say, well, then why are you here? 
that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's where people go to vacation you know or, or people say where are you from and i say miami beach and they say well no 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 i understand you move there but where you know where are you from originally I said, dude i was i'm a native there's not a lot of natives uh that that live here so uh so but to me because i've been here and maybe i'm tainted you know it's just it's flat and a lot of concrete but my wife just mentioned this the other day. She says, still, there's a thrill when you're getting off of I-95 and there's there's a big bridge. It's called the Julia Tuttle Causeway that connects. Remember, Miami Beach is an island. Yeah. It connects the main Miami to Miami Beach. And there's this one bridge where you look and you see a little bit of concrete jungle now because the buildings are so tall, but you see all along the beach and then you see all the palm trees and the water of Biscayne Bay. And so there's a lot to be thankful for where we live. Right. But yeah, when you travel, it doesn't matter where we are, even just driving in any anywhere. It could be Maine, it could be the South, it could be up, up uh, Pacific Northwest. It doesn't matter. But yeah, when you travel out of the country, uh, then it's different cultures, different ways they do things. Uh, my wife and I love doing walking food tours. Oh. Uh, one, because we like walking and more importantly, because I like food. <laughs> but <laughs> that's where you learn about the cultures. Yeah. And they teach you so much about the people of the area. So anybody that travels, I would I would absolutely do that. She yeah. Toby always makes sure that she books a, a walking food tour somewhere. Um, used to do Segway tours everywhere. I'm not sure I can hold up on a Segway for very long anymore. But uh, but those are also also great. Um, and then, yeah, talking to the people is different because you don't really get to talk to a lot. of. You're talking to people from the States for the most part. So that's, you know, that you don't really get to talk too much. Yeah. But on those walking food tours, you do. You, you get to talk to the local people and so on. So, uh, yeah, I just, you know, and again, I don't like to fly. So for me, let me see if I can point right there. Do you see that little plaque right there? I do. I, do. I just got that for hitting 2 million miles with wow. Delta. And that's not overseas flying. Wow. Because I, I use all the points I accrue for those. Yeah. That is a lot of Florida to Chicago, Florida to Des Moines, which is a big capital of the insurance right. business now. Florida, New York, Florida, you know, and occasional California trips and things like that. It's just a lot of flying. Yeah. And so for people, let me equate that back to what I teach. Kim, as you know, the, the, the fear of public speaking is the number one fear people have in the world. Seinfeld had a great line. He said people would rather die. Public speaking is the number one fear. Number two is dying. Wow. He said, so when you go to a funeral... Just imagine if you're more fearful of public speaking, that means you would rather be in the box than performing the eulogy. I mean, that puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Does. it? I mean, just, just think about that. So the number one fear is what I help people overcome. And when you watch people on day two walking confidently, and I just think back, oh, wait until you watch, because I video their presentations. Right. Wait until you watch your first presentation when you walked in. And to see them sit down after the fourth presentation when they know they killed it and to just see the pride. And I'll look at them. My favorite thing to do is look and go, you're pretty proud of yourself right now, aren't you? Because <laughs> you know people love to be hard on themselves. Of course. And they go, yeah, yeah. That's the coolest thing in the world. So yeah. to overcome it, people will say to me, well, you don't mind. I, and I don't. More people, the better. I love it. You know, like I said, give me a mic. Yeah. But... I don't like to fly. And a lot of people, that's nothing for them. I don't even like that they call the place they keep the planes a terminal. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's just not my thing, you know? But what happens through the years, you learn to cope. I look, if, if I feel something that's not right, I look at the flight attendants and if they're not freaking out, I'm fine. So you can get better at these things. You can overcome these things. And I think of everything I teach, besides the methodology, besides the discipline or any of that, confidence. Yeah. And that's, man, that's a big thing when you can feel like, when you feel confident than you never did before. Of that's course. a big thing. You watched it happen in the group we were in in Washington. Of course, of course. So, yeah, I know I know that was kind of a roundabout no, 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 travel, no. but, you know, it's just, uh, I'm just thinking about it and that's part of it. Yeah. Well, Jimmy... I, listen, dude, I appreciate you. I love you, man. And love thank you so much for spending time with me and sharing your your passion, 
your enthusiasm and your wisdom with everybody. I know they're going to get something out of this. And I know I did, by the way. And so we're going to put a bow on it. Thank everybody. Take care. Peace. Thanks, Kim. You got it. Hey, if anybody wants to get in touch with me for any litany of things, I teach a two-day seminar, presentation, communication, and sales skills. And I'm also available to do public speaking for any size audience, large or small. It's Jimmy P at Impact Speakers. That's my email address. You can go to impactspeakers.com or feel free to call me or text me or send me a smoke signal, 954-288-5467, which actually spells Jim P, by the way. <laughs>